All right, just a uh, quick video. I got a lot done in the last like hour and a half that I've been out here. So in the last video, I talked about the radiator, I think. So I got that in. I took the slim fan off. I'm going to try to retrofit a Mirage fan to fit on there. I've been told that like either the top or the bottom line up and you got to like make something to fit. That'll be 10 times better than that crappy eBay slim fan. I got the uh, the oil feed, or sorry, oil return line on. I had to trim a lot of it out, but I got it on and then put the, the sleeve on there, the heat sleeve. Had to bend these lines. This AC condenser, I'll probably link the company that I bought it from uh, in the description just so that people can avoid it. But they had a picture of the exact OEM one I needed with the lines and everything perfect and they end up sending me this one the lines are not right and they were pushed way over so I had to heat them up and push them over like three inches I mean it probably could have gotten damaged in shipping who knows but even this was like way too close I had to push it back because it was hitting this radiator so I was just like really got the coolant trimmed and added this tree in here I originally was going to put um, a sensor in the thermostat housing, but I didn't want to wait for gaskets or anything like that because I know for a fact that if I took it off, I'd probably have to put new ones on. So I found this on Amazon for like $10, and I was like, I can't really beat that. So I picked that up on, instead, and then I'll just put the sensor in that. And I cleaned up some wires. Uh, I'm not using ABS and AYC. I'm not obviously it's still front wheel drive right now, but when I go all wheel drive, I'm just going to go mechanical just to save myself one weight and two the hassle of trying to get the AYC system running, especially since I'm missing like all the ABS sensors and to get those new would be like a fortune, and getting them used is like you just can't buy those things used even if you. You can, but like you shouldn't. It's just it's a high wear item because they're, it's a magnet, and they're sealed and shielded wires. So like any corrosion or anything in them will end up breaking them. So like it's just buying that used seems silly, and buying them new is one seems to be impossible, and two they're if you can they seem to be extremely expensive. Same thing with Evo Four fender liners. I tried to sell those, no one wanted to buy them. I uh, had them for sale for $250, and I thought that was cheap considering the going price. And some guy messaged me a couple days ago, and he's like, hey, you still have those for sale? And I was like, no, man, I'm going to use them now. He's like, I can't find any under $400. And I was like, yeah, because they don't make them anymore, and they don't exist. You can't you can't find them on any parts source. So, I mean, good luck if anybody needs any. You're not going to get it. You're not going to find any. So, um... Like I said, I trimmed those wires and I back put them back in the car so now it's much cleaner. I'm going to fabricate a bracket that bolts to where this... I think this is part of the charcoal canister and the battery. Where the battery went, I do believe. I can't really remember. Um, I'm sure someone remembers. But it's, it's perfect to make a bracket off of. It's got four holes and it's really sturdy. So I'm, I'm going to bend a bracket that comes this way a little bit. It's going to hold these two relays. And then uh, it'll hold my oil catch can, this little dinky guy, which says it on it, just in case you didn't know. And then uh, this coolant overflow. I uh, wanted to put an OEM coolant overflow, but people wanted a lot of money for used ones, like 100 bucks, And they were like cloudy and gross looking. And then you could buy new billet ones, but they're like 175 plus shipping from the UK. And I'm like, uh, I'll just run a risk of a $40 one from eBay or something. So I don't have much left. Um, just fill the radiator with coolant. I'll put that gauge in. I'm going to put the sensors in for the oil. I still need to do an oil cooler. But for now, I want to just get the car running and on the road again. And then uh, I can assess from there if I have time to do the oil cooler for Tale of the Dragon. It's, I got like a month and a half left before then, but I want to like shake down the car first and make sure I don't have any like overlying overheating issues or just like anything that's going to leave me stranded on a nine hour trip. I'm trying to take precautions and doing as much as I can and 
like eliminating wires that are chafing, all their stuff like that. Because this car hasn't really been on a trip like that before. Like I think the most I've, I've personally ever driven this car is like maybe an hour. So last year I did take it to work in rush hour traffic and it was pretty good. And that was like an hour and a half, I think. But um, this car's usually never had any issues with stop-go traffic. It's always... I haven't really driven it like long distances where you just keep going and going for hours. So I'm going to just want to get it going and then test it from there. Then after that, I can put the oil cooler on. I picked up an OEM one from an Evo 4, but oil coolers scare me when you buy them used because... Oil, oil shavings, they don't come out of oil coolers, and you don't really know. Like, in the lines, the lines look clear, but you just, that's a huge risk to take because it can destroy an engine. And Subaru guys know this based off of, you know, the tiny little oil cooler or heater that they have on them. I've seen people reuse those after a blown engine and just completely blow another engine. So, it's in good shape, but I think I'm just going to use the brackets off of it, maybe. We'll see. But... Should should be pretty good go. Got a couple things to do, and then it'll be ready to at least hit the road. I'm waiting on... I bought Allen cap bolts for the valve cover and then the timing cover because there's, like, mismatch hardware from before when I got the engine, and then just all the, all the things are, like, the wrong sizes and lengths. So I figured I found a set on eBay for, like, $18 from a company. So just gonna, I just went with that and picked that pick that up so that's it for now i'll uh have another update video the next one will probably just me be be me starting it and double checking for leaks because uh i don't really have many things to do left just uh lower radiator hose which i'm gonna do that right after this video and then exhaust and then put the intercooler piping back on in the valve cover. And then it's good to start it again. Well, connect the battery. Other than that, that's all that's left. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Hopefully it's a little more exciting than just me rambling and it's the car actually running again. <laughs>